How you doing guys? Malik over at Modern Pawn. Today we're going to be talking about AR-15 bolt disassembly and inspection. It's one of the parts in the AR-15 that really does require some inspection if the rifle is used on a regular basis. If the rifle gets a lot of rounds put through it, uh, there is some inspection and possibly part swapping that needs to be done from time to time. Uh, the bolt carrier and bolt head and some of its components do have a service life. They don't last forever. So some of the parts do need to be changed out every now and then. We're going to show you how to take the bolt out of the gun, get the bolt stripped down, inspect it, see what needs to be changed out, see what needs to be replaced. Uh, so keep your gun running in tip-top shape. I know this is a little 101, but rear takedown pin right here, you're going to push this, pull it from the other side, it'll detent, gun will swing open, charging handle, bolt assembly comes out. Uh, quick tip, if you do happen to have a tight rear bolt pin. One of the things I like to keep around the bench if you don't have brass punches and nylon hammers and stuff like that is a sharpie. A sharpie works quite well on a stuck pin. You can push on it and get the detent depressed. They, they're actually pretty tough. They won't mar your gun. Um, and you don't have to go banging on it with a metal hammer. What I got here, I got a brand new bolt carrier assembly group and I got one of the bolt assembly groups out of the one, a rifle of mine that's got a lot of rounds through it. This rifle probably has uh, in the neighborhood of 20,000 rounds through it. It's on the, the end of its barrel life. Barrel's, barrel's probably past its barrel life. Bolt assembly group is, uh, is pretty worn. So we're going to see some of the comparisons here between a new one and a used one. First thing you're going to want to do to take the bolt assembly apart is you have this cotter pin right here. It is, you can use your fingernail if you got a little bit of a fingernail or something, anything kind of small and pointy. You pull this pin out, the cotter pin just comes right out. Once the cotter pin comes out, the firing pin will come out from the rear. Once the firing pin is removed, the cam pin is now removable once the firing pin has been removed. What I like twist the cam pin 90 degrees so that it'll clear the gas key and pretty much this is what you gotta do you gotta you got turn it 90 degrees so that the cam pin will clear the uh, gas tube extension now that your cam pin is out you can pull the bolt assembly out now what you have left is just the bolt carrier itself with this piece, this piece right here, I think they call it the gas key. The, the key is removable, but we do not remove the key unless there's something wrong with it. Um, it is torqued down. Uh, I think sometimes they lock tie them, torque them down, then they stake them in place. They do not want this coming loose. So if you were to look at a raw bolt carrier, it will have, it'll look like that. That's where the, the gas bleeds in there. And then these two holes right here are where those, those uh, Torx head lock down, lock it in place. So that's what it looks like without it on there. So generally speaking, what we're going to look for when we're examining the bolt carrier is we're looking to make sure that these, the stake across, that's what these are called, these little dents, they're staked in place to hold it in place even stronger than just the tension of the threads that the stake has not come loose, that when we grab a hold of the key, there's no jiggle whatsoever. I mean, it needs to be rock solid. No play whatsoever. If, there's, if it's moved at all, then it needs to be rebuilt. This needs to be pulled off, retorqued, restaked. It cannot have any movement whatsoever, because if it does, there's going to be bleeding gas out from underneath here. The rifle's going to short stroke. It's not going to function properly. Um, the rifle's not going to work right. So now that we've got that apart, we're going to want to kind of look inside here, in, inside the, uh, the face that the gas rings on the bolt run against. And you want to see if there's any big gouges, any big scratches, like it got a, a bad piece of debris in there and has really gouged the inside of it. Uh, light scratches, light swirl marks, that kind of stuff is not an issue, uh, but you want to make sure there's no big ding scratches, gouges, anything like that. Think of this like the cylinder wall uh, of a piston inside of a motor. You don't want to see any big score marks in it. The other thing we're going to look at is the mouth of the gas key. 
We want to make sure that this has not been crushed, dented, banged in. If it's not surrounded anymore, like one of the lips has been pushed down or in, that's no good. That means it had a um, crooked strike with the, the actual gas tube itself. When the gas tube uh, comes up to this thing right here, uh, it seats in there like that. And so if it comes in all crooked, it could, they could bang real bad and, and one will mess up the other. This, this rifle right here, like I said, it's in the neighborhood of 20,000 rounds. It doesn't have any dings or, or bangs or scratches on it. It's still nice and, and straight. And when you grab a hold of that gas key, there, there is no movement whatsoever. The next thing we're going to want to look at is the gas rings themselves. When we look at these gas rings, we want to see if, if they've smeared over, if one of them's missing, uh, if there's like a, a burr that's been raised on one of the sides that's normally from running the gun excessively dry for too long. Again, this is a new one, so I know these are going to be fine. Uh, look at those real close. There's going to be three of them. Uh, you're looking for three little rings. A lot of guys, they, they want to make sure that these the gaps in the rings aren't aligned and that they're all perfectly spaced out. Uh, you can do it, and once you put it in there, they're going to move around. So um, the probability of all three of them getting perfectly aligned is, is pretty slim. I wouldn't worry about that too much. The next thing we're going to want to do when we're expecting the bolt head is we're going to want to check the extractor. We want to make sure there's enough tension in the extractor spring. When I push down on this extractor, this pin right here is the fulcrum on which the extractor rocks. I want to be able to push back here and it feel really stiff. I don't want it to be real easy for me just to push on that and lift this up. So this one right here, I mean, it is, it's nice and tight. I don't know what spring they have in here. I haven't pulled it apart yet. But that's a nice, tight extractor spring. You want to push down generally right here, relieve some of the tension, and you can push this across. If it's even stiffer, you might take something small like that little Allen wrench, push it across. You have that pin now. The extractor comes right out. Um, that is a... That is the full-on beefy combo for extractor spring. You have this O-ring right here. Not all rifles come with that. Then you have the extractor itself, the extractor spring. And then there's a little black piece of rubber inside there. It's hard to see right now. Some of them have a blue piece. Some of them have a black piece. Uh, I think the black one is stiffer than the blue one. So it has the next part in there is this right here is the ejector. We generally don't completely disassemble the ejector. You need a tool that will compress this so that you can drive out this roll pin. We normally don't fully disassemble that. All we're going to want to do is make sure that it's functioning and when I push on this that it does spring back out and that it's not sucked all the way back in like it's jammed in, in the down position. We also want to make sure that it's not jammed in the out position. We want to make sure that it is springing, that is moving, it feels good. It's going to be pretty tight but movable. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at, we want to look at the back side of these bolt faces. The back side of these bolt faces right here on a rifle, um, they, can, they can pick up a lot of wear. Uh, that's what's holding the, the, the chamber closed or the back of these faces right here. If there's any of these where the, the corners have been chipped off, totally rounded out, heavily worn, uh, anything like that, the bolt's no good. You need to get a new bolt. Uh, that's one thing that we really want to look for. Make sure that the back side of these is in good shape. So now that you have it like this, the bolt assembly is pretty much taken apart completely. We're going to put it back together. First thing we're going to do now that we want to put it back together is we're going to put the extractor back in place. You know, what you're going to do is get it lined back up. You're going to put some tension on it. Push that pin back in until it comes all the way across. You want it to be flush on both sides. We're then going to put the bolt back into the carrier. Now the most bolts, I've never seen one that didn't have it, but there might be one that doesn't. We'll have two little nicks right here that will allow the cam pin to go in in only one direction. So when I try and put the cam pin in this way, it won't go. But when I turn it around this way, there's the, those little two nicks aren't there. The cam pin goes in and it stops on those nicks. So this side is out of round and intentionally out of round so that the cam pin only goes in one way. Once the cam pin is in there, this hole right here that's cross drilled is where the firing pin runs through it. So that runs through like this. 
and that's how your your firing pin works like that and your cam pin is is held in place like this and this goes back and forth inside the carrier so we're going to slide this back in place and we're going to line up that hole with the opening inside the bolt carrier group along this ramp right here once we have that in there i like to inspect my cam pin look at it to see if there's any excessive wear um, this one looks pretty good we'll get this guy back in place it's brand new it's better look good and once we get it in place we, I pull the bolt head forward and we rotate the cam pin 90 degrees. So you're going to want to rotate that like that. If it's not rotated in the proper position, the firing pin will not go inside. Firing pin goes in place. Now this is one place where guys mess up. The firing pin has to go all the way forward in order for this cotter pin to be in the proper position. If the firing pin is properly forward and the cotter pin is in the right position, it's hard to see, but the cotter pin catches the firing pin from coming out. So if you have it in the wrong position, let's put it in the wrong position. So what you're going to want here, you want this cotter pin to come across the firing pin like that so the firing pin can't come out. If you put the firing pin like this, what happens when you get the bolt together, A, the, the rifle won't fire, and B, the firing pin will fall out. So you'll have all kinds of problems. The other thing you want to do, uh, you want to inspect the firing pin. Make sure the tip is, is not smashed down, broken off, messed up. You want to make sure your firing pin is straight. Um, that one looks nice. Doesn't, I mean, it's, that's what it's, a brand new one's going to look like. When we put it through there, we want to make sure that the firing pin actually exits the front of the bolt face. So they're going to slide that in. And, and basically, it's almost flush with the back of this opening. And then we put the cottering pin across, back across, make sure it's sunk in all the way. And then I push the bolt head back in and the firing pin forward and make sure that something sticks out the hole in the front of the bolt face. If, if it's not coming out of the hole, either the hole in the bolt head might be misshapen, blocked, clogged, the firing pin might be bent, the, the head of the firing pin might be mushroomed out. There's lots of things that can happen. You need to check one or the other. Uh, generally speaking, a new firing pin fixes it. Now, now that we have it back together, what we're going to examine is that the gas rings are holding correctly. This is a very common problem. The gas rings do wear out. I always carry at least one spare set of gas rings, which is three gas rings total. And what you're going to want to do, the first test we want to make sure is that they're not too tight, which means that they're not binding. So what I like to do is I take the bolt carrier group and I push the bolt head in and I want to be able to flick it and have that push back out. So about as hard as you would swing a hammer driving a nail. Now that it's out, I want to be able to set it on the table and I do not want it to sink back in. So let's find a flat spot there. I don't want the carrier to drop back down onto the bolt head. So I need, the gas rings need to be able to support the weight of the bolt carrier. I don't want it to go plunk. So if it goes, and I set it down, it goes clunk, then they're worn out. And there's not enough tension between the gas rings and the bolt carrier group. The rifle's probably not going to function real good. This rifle has had several sets of gas rings put in it. So these, again, I can already feel it, are looser than these new ones. But I'm able to get it out, and when I set it up like this, it still holds. You know, I can, it doesn't take a lot of force for it to go down. So these rings are probably... On, on their way out, but it, it'll still hold them up. The rifle still runs fine. We shot it a couple days ago. It's still working flawlessly. So on, on this one right here, you can see how this right here has picked up a lot of shine. That's one of the bearing surfaces on which the carrier runs inside the upper receiver, as is this one, as is this, and as is all this right here. So all these shiny spots See that? All this, that, this, that down there. That's where your lubrication is going to be needed. That's what's taking the majority of the friction between the upper receiver, the charging handle, and the bolt carrier assembly. So when guys, they go all crazy lubing up the inside, lubing up all around here, this stuff hardly makes any contact whatsoever. Almost all the contacts here, on that right there, on that surface, 
here and there. And then of course right here is where the, the hammer drags along the bottom of the carrier group. Uh, also you see the shiny spots building up here on the, the back side of these bolt faces and along these right here that's where, where everything is going in and locking in place. Let me pull the cam pin out on this because this cam pin is, is fixing probably to be need, needing re, to be replaced. Yeah, this this cam pin has got some pretty pretty significant wear going on it. Um, there's actually like a, a a groove being cut into it that I can feel. Uh, it's got a lot of rounds on it. It's been a good rifle. If it needs a new cam pin, so be it. Uh, it's it's really got you can feel it where it's worn into the metal. Is it going to make the rifle explode on you? No. Is can it cause a malfunction? Maybe. Um, it is definitely very, very worn. Uh, a lot of guys underestimate how much force this little guy right here is under. This thing takes some serious, serious abuse. It's what transfers all the energy from the gas system to the bolt head in order for it to rotate. It really takes a, a beating. And so take care, take care of that guy. Put some lubrication on there. Some gun ease from PWS is some good stuff. Uh, any kind of of high quality gun grease or um, any kind of thicker oil. As you can see here, there's another bearing surface. It's, it's worn itself very shiny. And back side of this right here is very built up with carbon. Every now and then when it gets really filthy, I'll get the bronze scraper and scrape the crap off of this right here. The back sides of these bolt head locking faces have really picked up a lot of, of shine. And I can see that these corners are starting just to pick up a little bit of roundness. Not the end of the world, but again, this rifle is, has had a, a, a long, hard life, and it's, it's probably in need of a, uh, some new, fresh parts. Uh, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, send us a message. And again, thanks for watching.